Roll Tide, everyone, and welcome to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Thompson Tractor. I'm Trey Hannity, filling in for Roger Hoover, joined by Kira Goldstein. Kira, another loaded week of Alabama athletics. A lot of success again this week. For men's basketball, you could say it ended rather sweet. <laughs> Very clever. I see what you did there. What a season it's been for that men's basketball team as they continue their NCAA tournament run. Headed to the Sweet 16. They're not done yet. Yeah, the Crimson Tide won the regular season SEC championship and the SEC tournament championship and entered the NCAA tournament as the number two seed, taking on the 15 seed Iona Gales, coached by Rick Pitino. Now, due to NCAA restrictions, we can't actually show the highlights from the game until the men's tournament is over, so we'll just jump straight to the score. Alabama got off to an early start, leading Iona by just one at the half, 33 to 32. Trailing 42 to 40 with just over 12 minutes remaining, the Crimson Tide used an 18-4 run to take the lead for good as Alabama won their opening round matchup over Iona, 68 to 55. Herb Jones had a game-high 20 points to go along with six rebounds, while Javon Quinterly scored 11 off the bench, and John Petty Jr. and Jaden Shackelford each added 10. The Tide had a lot to celebrate, in Coach O's second year, the victory was just the second NCAA tournament win for the Crimson Tide in the past 15 seasons. Celebrate the Tide did, and that win moved them into the round of 32 for a matchup with the 10 seed Maryland Terrapins. Maryland led early on in the contest, but the Tide heated up from beyond the arc, shooting 47% in the first half, led by 11 from Alex Reese as Alabama held a 46-38 lead at the half. The Tide kept their hot shooting going throughout the second half, shooting 50% on three-point shots as the Tide finished with a convincing 96-77 win over Maryland. Jaden Shackelford had a team-high 21 points on 5 of 8 on three-pointers, and John Petty Jr. finished with 20 points and 6 rebounds. Javon Quinterly finished with a double-double as he had 14 points and 11 assists. That win moved the Crimson Tide to the Sweet 16. It's Alabama's first Sweet 16 appearance since 2004. That 2004 squad made it all the way to the Elite Eight. One more win, and Alabama will tie the school record for the best ever finish in the NCAA tournament. To make it to the Elite Eight, Alabama will have to defeat the 11th seed UCLA Bruins. Alabama and UCLA will square off on Sunday night at 615 Central at Hinkle Fieldhouse on TBS. And we wouldn't have it any other way. For Alabama to tie the school record by making it to the Elite Eight, the Tide will have to defeat the team with the most NCAA basketball national championships. UCLA has won 11 NCAA tournament titles. Wow, that's a whole lot. A win would put Alabama just one game away from their first ever, ever Final Four appearance. If Alabama can get past UCLA, the Tide will take on the winner of the number one seed Michigan and fourth seed Florida State on Tuesday. For the most part, the Tide has been in a bubble in Indianapolis, and when they're not practicing or playing, they've been staying at their hotel. Well, they had an off day on Tuesday. What did they decide to do with it? Well, they took a special visit to the Indianapolis Zoo. Let's go all access with the Tide as they enjoyed a little outside time at the zoo. Hey, this one's coming, watch. <laughs> Like that. Look, you can see his mouth. He's he drinking the water, bro. Yeah, good. Oh, get him over here. Get him over here, too. Bro. There you go. Let him be low. Give it five, bro. They tripping. Oh. They look like the one off surf up, bro. Favorite animal? These walruses over here, these big boys. Here's my gun. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> go. Look how big his head is. Look at He's staring at you, man. Oh my goodness, I ain't seen these guys. Fast Them animal, so man. I ain't gonna lie, I got yeah. a new favorite animal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I ain't seen no cheetah. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Give me a little circle. Roll tide roll. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Thompson Tractor. Just like the Alabama men's basketball team, the Alabama women's basketball team is competing in the NCAA tournament. The first round opponent for Alabama was the 10th seed Tar Heels of North Carolina. Ironically, the last time Alabama was in the NCAA tournament, back in 1999, their opponent that was North Carolina. <laughs> what a coincidence. Last time North Carolina won that matchup, but this time the Crimson Tide would prevail. Alabama led for almost the entire game against North Carolina. And Megan Abrams three about three and a half minutes into the game gave the Crimson Tide a 6-2 lead over the Tar Heels and Bama would never look back. 
Alabama led by as many as nine in the first period of play and held a 22-15 lead after the first. In the second, the Tide extended its lead to double digits at 29-19. On a three by Jordan Lewis, the Tar Heels would cut the Tide's lead to 31-29 with a 10-2 run, but the Crimson Tide would answer right back with a 10-2 run of their own to close out the first half with a 10-point lead, 41-31. North Carolina pulled to within five in the third, but Alabama closed out the period with a 7-2 run to lead by 10, 60-50, heading into the final 10 minutes of play. In that final period, the Crimson Tide led by as many as 14 as Alabama defeated North Carolina 80-71 in the first round of the women's NCAA tournament. Jordan Lewis led Alabama with a game-high 32 points and had a near triple-double. Along with those 32 points, Lewis had 11 rebounds and 8 assists. Also in double figures was Hannah Barber with 14, Jasmine Walker with 13, and Araya Copeland with 13 points and a game-high 12 rebounds for her 11th double-double of the season. What an exciting game and the first win for Alabama's women's basketball team in the NCAA tournament since 1999. It would take a bit of an upset and more efforts like Jordan Lewis's from the first round win to advance to the Sweet 16. And what are the odds? Just like the men, the women took on Maryland in the second round. This time the Terrapins were the higher seed as Alabama was seventh with Maryland being seeded at number two. Alabama got off to a rough start as second-ranked Maryland led 30-9 at the end of the first period. The Tide was able to get some momentum going into the second as they ended the half down 54-25. To start the second half, the Tide came out strong with an 11-4 run highlighted by back-to-back -back Jasmine Walker threes. But ultimately, the number, two, the number two seed Maryland Terrapins was just too much as they would get the win 100-64. Jasmine Walker led the Crimson Tide in scoring with 23 points to go along with seven rebounds. Very impressive. Alabama finished the season 17-10 and and got their first NCAA tournament appearance win since 1999. So a great job to Coach Curry and the Crimson Tide. Alabama has been known as a football school. But Kira, it's really so much more than that. The Tide has won a national championship in football, gymnastics, softball, men's and women's golf, and that's not even including individual championships or the SEC titles. That is very true. Football school, no. Basketball school, no. Championship mm. school, yes. <laughs> Alabama won the 2020 SEC football championship. The Tide then went on to win the college football playoff national championship. Men's basketball won their regular season championship for the SEC, then doubled down as the best team at the SEC tournament as Coach O's squad won the whole thing in Nashville. And then this past weekend, Alabama won another championship. It was head coach Dana Duckworth's Alabama gymnastics team who won the SEC title as well. Alabama started off on the floor exercise posting a 49-450 before rotating to vault where it tallied its best score in more than five years, scoring 49-550. A strong 49-425 on the uneven bars put the championship just within reach. Then Alabama went to the balance beam for their final rotation. The Crimson Tide finished strong with a 49-450 on the beam to hold off LSU who came on strong in their last event on vault. Ranked 8th nationally coming into the championships, the Crimson Tide held off the 4th ranked LSU Tigers, who took 2nd, and the number 1 team in the nation, the Florida Gators, who finished 3rd with a season best score of 197.875. Alabama was led by Luisa Blanco, who won the all-around with a 39.800, and Lexi Graber, who posted a 39.575 to take 3rd in the all-around. Blanco also won a share of the vault, uneven bars, and balance beam with a trio of 9.95s. Blanco was also named the SEC Gymnast of the Year. The Alabama gymnastics team has added to what has already been an incredible year for the University of Alabama. The Southeastern Conference Gymnastics Championship is the 10th title in school history. 
It just seems like a few weeks ago we were watching the Alabama football team raise the trophy in Miami as they won the college football national championship with the 52-24 victory over Ohio State. Now the Tide is back out on the practice field preparing for the upcoming season. We'll take you out to the practice field with Coach Saban and the Tide when we return. Welcome back. Just a little over two months ago, the Alabama football team won its 18th national championship game over the Ohio State Buckeyes in Miami. This past Friday, the 2021 version of the Crimson Tide took to the practice field for the first time for spring practice. Alabama will have 15 practices, including A-Day. The Tide's spring practice will conclude with the Golden Flake A-Day game that is scheduled for April 17th. That game will kick off at noon central and will be televised on ESPN. The new coaches are, you know, doing, I think, really well. Uh, I think it's been a transition a little bit, and we spent a lot of time working together on offense to, um, you know, implement some new uh, ideas, uh, as well as for the new coaches to learn the system, you know, that we had here before uh, and, you know, try to improve on it. So uh, I'm, I'm really pleased about that. Defensively, you know, we only have one guy, and, you know, Jay's done a great job. He's really smart. and. Uh, he's learned quickly and uh, he's added some things, you know, for us, uh, which has made us better. So, you know, we're, we're really happy about that. Also on Tuesday, Alabama held the first of two pro days for draft eligible Crimson Tide athletes to showcase their talents for NFL scouts. All 30 NFL teams were in attendance. Ten draft eligible players worked out for the NFL scouts as they were tested in the bench press and vertical jump along with the broad jump, 40-yard dash, agility drills, and position-specific drills. The NFL Draft is scheduled for April 29th throughout May 1st in Cleveland, Ohio. We'll head out to the Diamond to see how the Alabama baseball and softball teams fared this past weekend when Tide TV returns, coming up next. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Thompson Tractor. Hey, Trey. It's been a great start to the season for the Alabama softball team. It really has. And going into the series against the 19th ranked Tennessee Volunteers this past weekend, the Crimson Tide was 22-1 and and ranked second in the country and swept their opening series in the SEC against the Auburn Tigers. We love to see it. In game one on Friday, trailing 4-2 to two in the bottom of the seventh on a 3-2 pitch, Bailey Dowling led the inning off with a solo homer to center field to cut Tennessee's lead to just a single run at 4-3. to three. With the tying run on base, the Vols pitcher struck out Lexi Kilfoyle to end the game as Tennessee hung on to defeat Alabama in Game 1, 4-3. Needing a win on Saturday to even the series, leading 3-1 in the bottom of the fifth, Bailey Hemphill crushed the pitch off the scoreboard for the solo home run. Then again in the sixth, it was Hemphill who drove in two more with a single to left field as Alabama evened the series with the 7-1 win in Game 2. Lexi Killifoyle improved a perfect 10-0 on the season as she held the Vols to just one run across seven innings. With the game scoreless in the fifth inning of Sunday's Game 3, Lexi Killfoyle showed she can hit as well as pitch as she dropped an RBI single into right field to put the Crimson Tide up 1-0. Then with the infield drawn in and Maddie Morgan at the plate, Morgan hits it to the second baseman. She decided to throw it home, but Savannah Woodard slid in under the tag. 2-0 Crimson Tide. KB slides drew a bases loaded walk for the final run of the game. On the mound, Montana Fouts was dominant, striking out eight and shutting out 19th ranked Tennessee across seven innings as Alabama wins game three and the series with the three to nothing win. A big series win for the Crimson Tide over the Volunteers. How impressive have the Tide been so far this season? I mean, Alabama is ranked in the top five in every poll. And in this week's softball RPI rankings, the Crimson Tide are ranked number one. Wow, how about that? The Alabama baseball team's off to a good start as well. And this past weekend, they had to take on a pretty tall task here as the 22nd ranked Crimson Tide opened the SEC against the number one Arkansas Razorbacks. They may have been playing the number one team in the country, but the Tide made a statement in game one, and really they did enough in just the second inning. Alabama exploded for 10 runs in the second on eight hits, three walks, and a hit by pitch, highlighted by a two run home run to right field by guess who? Owen Diodotti. Caden Rose, Andrew Pinckney, and Jackson Tate homered in the 7th, 8th, and ninth innings as the 22nd ranked Alabama Crimson Tide dominated number one Arkansas 16 to 1 to open the series. Tyler Raz limited the Razorbacks to just one run in six innings for the win. Connor Shamblin finished the game with three scoreless innings to pick up his first save of the year. 
Now, unfortunately, on Saturday, the Arkansas Razorbacks proved why they're the number one team in the country as they bounced back with a 9-1 win in Game 2. But going for the series win on Sunday in Game 3, Arkansas led 3-0 going to the ninth. Sam Prater led off the inning with his fourth homer of the season, but that would be all the tied with score as the top-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks took the series 3-1 with the win in Game 3. Alabama couldn't take the series, but a really, really impressive win on Friday night, 16-1. Yeah, that's a huge score. The Alabama swimming and diving team kept the championship school theme going at the NCAA championships this past week. Morgan Scott, Kalia Antonui, Flora Molinar, and, Co and Cora Dupree combined to post a school record 309-78 to win the national championship in the 400 freestyle relay by more than half a second. That win helped the Crimson Tide secure a fifth place team finish at the NCAA championships, tying for the best in school history. Morgan Scott broke another Alabama record as she finished fourth in the 100 freestyle with a time of 47.48. And Ryan White picked up a couple of second place finishes as she won silver in the 200 backstroke and 100 backstroke events. Congratulations to the Alabama swimming and diving team on a fantastic season. The Alabama soccer team kept their undefeated spring record going this past Sunday against South Alabama. Alabama scored three goals in the first 45 minutes of action. Up 3-2 to two in the 65th minute, Cat Rogers crossed the ball into the box and Tana Sanchez Corretto with an incredible bicycle kick off the ball into the back of the net secured the win for the Crimson Tide. Alabama proved to 5-0 on the spring with the 4-2 to win over South Alabama. Well, just like softball, the Alabama volleyball team welcomed the Tennessee Volunteers to Tuscaloosa. In the first of two matches, Tennessee won the first set 25-16, but Alabama won the final three sets to claim the 3-1 match win. But in the Tide's final home game of the season on Saturday, the Vols would get the best of them, picking up the win 3-1. What a busy week, and we're not finished yet. We still have our plays and players of the week to go. We'll have those coming up for you in just 90 seconds. She plays that one across the top. Overall, bicycle kick opportunity, and that one goes in. And the 1-1 one -one is hit out to center and a diving catch. Racing back on this Wallace to the track, to the wall. This one's gone, and this ball game is over. Crimson Tide stunned the number one ranked team in the country, the Arkansas Razorbacks, 16-1. Welcome back. Those are our ATI Plays of the Week, and now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, brought to you by Payless Drugs. Luisa Blanco led the Alabama Gymnastics team to their 10th SEC Championship this past Saturday. Blanco won the all-around with a score of 39.8. She was also named the SEC Gymnast of the Year. And Jordan Lewis had a career-high 32 points in the Tide's NCAA Tournament win over North Carolina. Lewis had a near triple-double along with 32 points. She finished with 11 rebounds and 8 assists as well. And those are our Pay Less Drugs Players of the Week. Thanks for watching another episode of Tide TV This Week. Thanks again to Trey for filling in for Roger, and we hope to see you next week. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.